Greetings, nerdlings. Today, we're going to be talking about the neuron and how it works. So as a review from our previous lecture, let's go over the different parts of the neuron. Starting at number one, these are going to be the dendrites, which are reserving impulses from other nerve cells. Two is going to be the nucleus. Three is going to be that axon through which the impulses are transmitted. Four is going to be our axon hillock and five is the cell body. Now, what I would like for you guys to do is watch this short video clip. Make sure you take notes over it and you might need to rewatch it again to answer some of the questions I pose later on in this video lecture. This baseball player springs into action. His nervous system rapidly processing information in a network of nerve cells or neurons. Each neuron receives input from one or more cells. In response, the neuron may generate an electrical signal known as an action potential that travels down the length of the axon. Let's take a closer look at the plasma membrane of an axon. Even without an action potential, the axon is a busy place with many ions moving across its membrane. Much of this ion movement is driven by the sodium-potassium pump. Using energy from ATP, sodium-potassium pumps actively transport sodium ions out of the cell and potassium ions in, creating an uneven distribution of charge across the membrane. Some potassium channels are open all the time, allowing potassium ions to leave the cell. As a result of these ion movements, the inside of the cell is negative relative to the outside. This condition is called the resting potential. The membrane of an axon is also packed with gated ion channels that open and close during an action potential. At resting potential, the gated channels are closed. If a stimulus changes the distribution of charge across the membrane sufficiently, the gated sodium channels open. Movement of sodium ions across the membrane makes the inside of the cell more positive. This reversal of the charge distribution causes the gated sodium channels to close and the gated potassium channels to open. As potassium ions move out of the cell, the original charge difference is re-established across the membrane, closing the gated potassium channels. This sequence of events is called an action potential. The sodium-potassium pump restores the distribution of ions back to their previous levels at resting potential. Let's look at how the action potential is conducted along the axon. As the change in charge difference across the membrane spreads from open sodium channels, other sodium channels farther along the axon begin to open. The original sodium channels close and adjacent potassium channels open. As potassium ions move out of the cell, the original charge difference across the membrane is restored and then the potassium channels close. Meanwhile, new sodium channels open followed by the opening of new potassium channels and the closing of sodium channels. In this manner, the action potential is propagated along the axon of the neuron, eventually reaching another cell. The information carried by this action potential will be processed with other information, permitting this baseball player to make a spectacular catch. So I hope that little video was helpful. So what I want for you guys to do now is think about the resting potential of that axon. So at rest, there's a negative charge, and that's negative 70 millivolts. So it's kind of like a battery. We have a negative charge inside and a positive charge on the outside. And as you can see right here, we have more potassium on the inside than we do on the outside. We have a whole lot more sodium on the outside than we do on the inside. And this is because of that sodium-potassium pump. The sodium-potassium pump is pumping three sodiums out to the extracellular fluid and two potassiums in. There's also open potassium channels that are letting potassium flow into the outside of the cell. One of the larger things that gives it the negative charge inside the cell 
aside from having so many positive ions outside of the cell, are that a lot of the membrane proteins are actually negatively charged. So there are proteins down here that you guys do not see that have a much more negative charge. So looking at this table right here, it kind of gives you a breakdown of the different charges inside and outside the cell. So like I was saying, the potassium ions have a much higher concentration inside the cell, or 140 micromoles. And outside the cell, they have a much lower concentration. Whereas the sodium has a much lower concentration inside the cell than it does outside of the cell. So we're going to talk about an action potential next. Action potentials basically propagate impulses along the neurons. So if you remember from my past lecture, I had those little nodes of Ranvier that are in between each of those Schwann cells. And that's what that impulse goes down the cell through. So it's moving that impulse down the axon. And it does this by creating action potentials. So the membranes of neurons are polarized by the establishment of electrical potentials across the membranes. And the way we get these electrical potentials is because of the amount of sodium and potassium either inside or outside the cell. And when I use the word polar, remember it's talking about something that has a negative charge and a positive charge, similar to a water molecule. In a water molecule, we have that larger oxygen atom over here, which has a negative charge. And then we have two smaller hydrogen atoms on each of the other sides. Kind of looks like a little Mickey Mouse ear. So the hydrogens are going to be positive, while the oxygen is negative. Same thing when this occurs. And you also want to keep in mind that a negative and a negative are going to repel each other. Just like if we stuck two positive sides of a magnet together, they're going to repel each other and it takes a little bit of force to get them together. So in response to a stimulus, the sodium and potassium gated channels sequentially open and it causes the membrane to become locally depolarized. Depolarized meaning that there's no longer going to be a net charge. It's going to get to zero. Now eventually, we're actually going to get above zero into the positive charges, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So the sodium potassium pumps are powered by ATP which is cellular energy, and they work to maintain the membrane potential. So if you look right here, this is a sodium pump. We have three sodiums coming into the sodium potassium pump and being released into the extracellular fluid. We also had our ATP come in here because that pump requires energy. We now have two potassiums that are going to be transferred into the cellular fluid. So I just wanted to make sure you guys had a good grasp on how that sodium potassium pump works. So now what I'm going to do is walk you through what happens at an action potential. Before we get started, I want you guys to go ahead, take some time, and I want you to pause this video. While it's paused, what I want you to do is draw this graph. I want you to have a completely separate sheet of paper for that. And as we go along on the next couple of slides, I want you to go ahead and label the graph and explain what's happening at each of the points in the graph. You're also going to want to label the sides and we'll get to a graph that shows you what those labels should be a little bit later on. One thing I want to make sure everybody knows is that this point right here is going to be the resting stage and that's going to be at negative 70 millivolts. So take your time. All right, so now we're going to talk about the generation of an action potential. An action potential can be considered as a stage of events. The first stage is the resting potential. This is where most of the voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels are closed. So looking here, we have our sodium and our potassium channels. Those are both closed. The only thing that's going to be working at this time is going to be our sodium-potassium pump. But the channels themselves are going to be closed. This is also going to be our resting state at the threshold right here. Our resting state is going to be at negative 70 millivolts. So when an action potential is generated, finally, that voltage-gated sodium channel opens first, and it starts letting sodium into the cell. So that's going to make the inside of the cell more positive. And if you think about it, I know previously in a lecture, you were given a salty banana, and the banana represents a neuron. And what are bananas high in? They're high in potassium. So bananas are very high in potassium. If we're going to salt on top of the potassium banana, that's going to be high in sodium. So there's higher sodium on top of the banana than there is inside the banana. 
and the banana is representing our nerve cell. So when we open up that that channel, more sodium is going to be allowed to flow into the banana or the nerve cell and it's going to create a more positive charge. So during the rising phase, the threshold is crossed and the membrane potential increases too and then eventually it's going to be past zero. So it's going to hit zero and then it's actually going to become positive. So looking at what's happening, we started off in our resting state where both of those sodium and potassium channels are shut down. So in our membrane potential here is going to be our negative 70 millivolts. Then we have depolarization that starts to occur. And the sodium gates are going to open, allowing sodium to pass into the cell. So this would be the extracellular fluid, and it's going to flow into the intracellular fluid. So the inside of the cell is going to become more and more positive and that's occurring right here. Once it gets past this threshold, then the action potential is actually going to occur. The threshold is basically telling us, is this action potential going to occur or not? Because we might have a little buildup and then it goes and no action potential happens. In order for an impulse to be sent from one neuron to the next, the action potential actually has to occur. So if that rise does not go past the threshold, meaning it doesn't get to a specific um, positive or reach past zero, then that action potential isn't going to get sent down the chain of those Schwann cells through the nodes of Ranvier. So when the action potential is generated, again, we have our sodium channels that have opened. We're getting more and more positive. During that rising phase, the threshold is crossed, we're going all the way up and we're becoming more and more positive until we get past zero and we now actually have a positive charge. During the falling phase, the voltage-gated sodium channels become inactivated, meaning they're no longer working, they close down. Now, the voltage-gated sodium channels open up and potassium flows out of the cell. So this is going to create a negative charge. So sodium shuts down, there's now sodium outside of the cell, the potassium flows out of the cell. So now we're starting to get brought back down to the resting state. But what happens is that we actually get an undershoot because there's such a lack of potassium as well as sodium, the inside of the cell becomes more negative than negative 70 millivolts. So we get an undershoot is what we call it. So again, we have our resting state, we have our depolarization when it's getting more and more positive. We have the rising phase, which is three right here. Once we get to the rising phase, we're going to start our trip back down. And that's when we're going to have the sodium close down and the potassium is going to open up, letting the potassium out of the cell. So our falling phase again, we have our sodium coming back out of the cell, meaning that it's no longer going into the cell, making it positive it's now leaving the cell. We also have the sodium leaving the cell. So that's leaving a lot of negative charges inside the cell, which is going to make our negative charge right here. And as you can see, it's about to undershoot. So during the undershoot, the membrane permeability to potassium is at first higher than at rest, meaning it's going to be more negative. So it might be negative 100 millivolts or even negative 150 millivolts. Then the voltage-gated sodium channels close and the resting potential comes back up to normal in that negative 70 millivolts. So again, looking here, we start off at our resting state. Our action potential is activated. Those channels open up for the sodium to come in, which makes our intra intracellular space more positive. Then we get our rise. It becomes more and more positive and action potential happens. And then those sodium gates close down. Sodium flows out of the cell. Potassium actually starts flowing out of the cell, which makes that cell more negative. And that's where we get this undershoot right here. Then it goes back up into the resting state of negative 70 millivolts. So looking at our graph again, make sure you've labeled your graph appropriately and that you have explained what's occurring at each of those phases. So next, we're going to talk a little bit about what we call the refractory period. So during the refractory period, after an action potential has occurred, a second action potential can't occur or it cannot be initiated. It basically has to recover. Only example I can think of is kind of like a toilet. So if you flush a toilet,
the water is going to go down and you're going to flush. No matter how many times you jiggle that little handle up and down, you have to wait for the water to fill back up before you can flush it again. So it's kind of like a little phase where we need to recuperate. So looking at this graph again, make sure you've labeled yours. And right here we have our minus 70 millivolts, negative 55. We have our zero and then plus 30. So we have a stimulus that occurs. And now the stimulus is either going to create an action potential or it's not going to reach the threshold. So if we don't go high enough, it's never going to get past that threshold and it's not going to get sent on to the next neuron. So we go up, depolarization occurs, so the sodium comes in, we're getting more and more positive. We have our action potential and then repolarization occurs. This is when the sodium is leaving the cell and the potassium is also leaving the cell. So the cell becomes more and more negative, it actually dips below the resting point, and then eventually it closes off the potassium pumps, or excuse me, the potassium channels, and we reach the threshold or the resting state again. The threshold would be up here, and that's what I was talking about earlier. We have to get up above that threshold in order for that action potential to occur. We also call this dip right here hyperpolarization meaning it's going above and beyond what it should, or in this case, below what it should as far as negativity goes. Another thing I want to make sure you guys understand for the action potentials, they differ on the response. So the closer the action potentials are together, it's sending more and more responses to your brain saying, you need to remove yourself from the stimulus right now. So if I was to put my hand on a hot plate, I'm going to have a ton of action potentials that are really, really close to each other. So those peaks are going to be extremely close to each other, sending it to me until I remove my hand. Now if I have something soft like I just lay my finger on my hand, I'm not going to get as many action potentials as close together because it's not a negative stimulus. It's not something that my body's saying, oh, that's really bad, you need to get out of that situation right away. So I hope that was helpful and we will continue this lecture shortly. I'll see you guys next time.